And we welcome you to Fullerton College Water Polo here on KBPK. I am Ryan Osborne, joined by Joseph Pavlenko as we get set for Fullerton College and Riverside City. Once again, Ryan Osborne, Joseph Pavlenko. Now, before we get to the action here, very quickly, we want to do a quick promo of what we've got going on here at KBPK this upcoming week. Joe, we've got a lot of events and a lot of different things taking place. Yeah, we do. And this week is certainly going by fast. Ryan and I out here doing the women's water polo. I think we're going to call it Water Polo Wednesdays here at KBPK. Tomorrow, well, we're busy. I don't think we're bringing you any sort of content. Then we go into Friday at Fullerton College. Manufacturing Day is coming up. That's for the Tech and Engineering Department, which KBPK happens to be a part of. Then we have World College Radio Day. We'll have the 235 students on the air as much as possible during the day, trying to get as many interviews as possible over the course of the day for World College Radio Day. And then we'll wrap it up with Football Fridays on KBPK. That'll be Ryan, Mark Pavlovich, Corey Nalen, myself, and the 145 Broadcast Sports students bringing you all the action on those games. Or that game, I should say. As we are underway here at the Fullerton College Aquatic Center. It is Fullerton versus Riverside City here on a, we'll say a warm afternoon in the city of Fullerton as an ordinary foul takes place. Possession goes over to RCC. Quick rundown of the RCC starting lineup. You go with Sophia Mather, who is in the cage, joined by Jaden Johnson and Nicole Robertson, in addition to Annabella, Sto Annabella Storar and Chandler Burrell. Abigail Ruiz, and she is joined by Jesse Nelson, who is trying to make her case for State Player of the Year in the early going. Fullerton College brings out Riley Jackson. Jackson on the far side gets fouled. That is going to be Fullerton College possession. Jackson, one of the best for Fullerton College in terms of scoring, sees her teammate get a goal. It's Kayla Arias, she's off and running. So Fullerton College with a quick attack. It's their second possession. They get on the board, and it's one to nothing. Fullerton with the lead. See the vastness of the pool here at Fullerton College. As on the far side, setting things up will be Chandler Burrell. Burrell getting heavy pressure on that far wing. It ends up being Elsie Weskey, or excuse me, Elise Weskey, who has the pressure there, tries to get that ball inside of two meters. However, it will go to Fullerton after the save by Brisella Robinson. Robinson goes to Jackson on this right side. Swims up to it, looking for someone, looking for a teammate, trying to find Monse Maldonado. Maldonado at the point, she'll find someone. That goes off the top of the cage and just goes wide. The attempt was made there by Kaylee Rojas, and Rojas with a shot almost gets Fullerton a 2 nothing lead. You look at Fullerton so far this season, they are eight and six. Ball on the far side, moved over to Burrell. Burrell tries to swing it on the in, goes towards the inside of two meters, a chance there is parried away, and Brisella Robinson has been active in the early going here. She's got a couple of saves, and it's one nothing Fullerton. Robinson will push things up. You kind of see all the glare that's taking place here in the city of Fullerton just by the sun's positioning from that kind of camera angle over to our left. Ball gets scooped over towards the right, down the middle, gets taken away, dispossessed there by Nicole Robertson. Robertson will poke it back to Sophia Mather, and Mather is going to direct traffic and move it down into the left-hand corner. Left side, it's picked up by Abigail Ruiz. Ruiz trying to find someone, looks over towards Robinson who scores. So Robinson gets on the board. She gets her first goal in this match and it is an equal 1-1 opportunity for both of these two sides. Once again, here on KBPK, Water Polo Wednesdays, bringing it to you live here on KBPK. Don't forget to join us on Friday as we've got a whole host of events here on KBPK starting things off with, well, it's World College Radio Day. That is October the 6th, so this Friday coming up and then immediately following that, we will have our Football Fridays that if you have tuned in each of the last two weeks, they have been thrilling matchups to watch so far. But for the moment being, Water Polo Wednesdays allows for Fullerton to see the ball go on the right-hand side. 
goes past the end line, and it will be taken over by RCC. Now, these two teams faced each other to start off the season. RCC with a 13-5 win over top of Fullerton. It was one of RCC's best showings against Fullerton in quite some time. Ball to the right-hand side. They're looking for Robertson to set it up. Now trying to find Abigail Ruiz. That shot gets blocked. Ruiz, left wing. She'll find Robertson. Robertson on the setup, looking for Ruiz once more. Now to Burrell. Burrell at the top of the point. She's looking for someone. Gets the left-hand corner, and RCC takes the lead. Beautiful shot there by Burrell as she was able to pick the spot that she wanted and ends up finding top left, and it goes in for a goal. So it's 2-1 RCC with the lead. Got quiet right as I took a drink, Ryan. <laughs> like you said, Mother Nature not doing us any favors with that glare on the pool. And the thing is with these student athletes, they're also not only going to have to battle the glare if they're on this near side of the pool, but they are also going to have to figure out how to kind of work in and out of the shadows on the right side into the corner. Here's Robertson. Robertson, an assist is going to go to her after she gets it over to, it looks like it actually goes to Samantha Thomas, and Thomas is able to score. So Thomas gets that one. A timeout is taken by Fullerton College, and with 4.16 on the clock in the first quarter of play, it's a 3-1 matchup that goes by way of Riverside City College. You are watching Water Polo Wednesdays here on KBPK. Ryan Osborne, Joseph Pavlenko running down what's going on around KBPK in the recent, recent? I should say, coming up on KBPK, not what has happened as you see Coach Gabriel Martinez coaching up his squad on the far side of the pool. And Joe, one thing that we're going to be stressing throughout the entirety of this broadcast is the fact that this is the opening week of Breast Cancer Awareness Month here at Fullerton College, so not just at KBPK. And it's something that not only are we stressing at KBPK, but the entire campus is trying to make sure everyone is aware that this campaign is going on. Definitely, not just KBPK, not just Fullerton College, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is October, folks. And be mindful of anything, you know, while we're talking about, you know, the big C as it were. There's many years where I used to participate in re events like Relay for Life, Ryan. The amount of people that want to do a 24-hour walk around a track that mm. do not bring sunblock, <laughs> that end up at the end of the weekend covered in sunburns while we were out walking to raise money for cancer. <laughs> <laughs> um, or not for cancer, but for cancer research. Um, wild. Ball on the right side. Fullerton is playing with a person up. They've got Jackson who goes for that left corner. There's a parry away. A save goes to Sophia Mather. She has her first and an exclusion going against, I believe it's Riverside City College here in just a moment. No, it's actually going to be Fullerton on the free attempt right side of the pool. Thought it was going to be an exclusion. That ball gets tipped away and it will end up being an ordinary on the far side. Now on the in, they try and find someone. It goes towards Alexandra Halushka. Halushka, right-handed, trying to get an attempt in. And that will be an exclusion going against Nicole Robertson. Halushka on the inside. Halushka looking for a teammate. Poked up. It goes into the awaiting arm of Monse Maldonado. But Maldonado loses it, commits a foul, and it will go to RCC. So the switchover brings it back to the Tigers. We had some really physical play right there on the part of the RCC squad, Ryan. The Ri the Tigers, the Rigers, what? <laughs> <laughs> the Tigers really upping their physicality, trying to, you know, keep their lead. They're up two to one. Right side. See on your computer screen, Fullerton trying to set things up. They try and go to Halushka. Halushka actually gets called for one, and it will go back to RCC. So we mentioned earlier that these two teams played each other to start off the season. Tigers actually blew Fullerton out of the water in that first matchup. 
13 to 5 over the Hornets. RCC got two goals from Jesse Nelson in the first quarter. They actually never trailed in that matchup. Consistent scoring was key for the Tigers as they look to set up and try and get another goal to their credit. Nicole Robertson to the far side. She looks for someone looking for an attempt to get it over to Ruiz. Ruiz can't find it. She'll just dump it into the corner and change of possession takes place. But going back to that first matchup of the season between these two sides, RCC got goals in the first, second, and third quarters, three, five, and four to their credit to stretch out their advantage. They ended up finishing the game with six goals credited to Jesse Nelson as she led both teams in scoring. Fullerton on the turnover. RCC will take it back over with Robertson. Robertson looking for someone. She's actually going to try and find Samantha Thomas. Thomas is on the inside going one-on-one -on -one against Riley Jackson. Jackson has to give up the angle and now gives away her positioning to go and pressure Robertson on the outside. Now to Annabella Storar. Storar looking for a teammate. That's an ordinary. Goes up to the top. It will find Burrell. Burrell on the floater, and that goes up and high. You know, if you're Fullerton College right now, down a couple points, you really don't want to be committing those kind of can we call them reckless fouls, Ryan? Creating some turnovers, giving momentum and the ball possession to Riverside? Yeah, I think you can, because Fullerton's trying to set themselves offensively. And those types of fouls, what they do is not only are they turnovers, but it also gives the other team an opportunity. In RCC, who has an excellent offensive uh, unit, it gives them a chance to set up. There's a ball on the far side. They get a quick goal in transition. That's going to be an assist to Robertson, and it looks like initially that's going to go to Chandler Burrell on the far side. Ended up setting up right near the far post, and she kind of just maintained her possession and was able to toss that one in. Prior to the game, though, Ryan, you were talking to Gabriel Martinez, the head coach of Fullerton College's water polo team. And he had some interesting comments. A lot of players that you and I thought were going to be coming back this season were not returners because as he likes to do in his program, as I heard him mentioning to you, he likes to have, a, have an ethos of teaching, you know, hard work, training people and creating leaders in his program, which unfortunately for him, but fortunately for his players, turned into his players moving on. Yeah, and you mentioned that. I mean, we were able to talk to him before this matchup. There's a floater there trying to place that one perfectly. On that left-hand side was Thuan Baron, and Baron just sees that one poked away by Sophia Mather. Sub in for Fullerton on that left side, specifically a goalkeeper. Doherty is now in. She tries to get an attempt there. Halushka makes a block. That goes off the top of the cage. Another opportunity. The rebound is there, and it will end up going to Samantha Thomas for a goal. So you're looking at RCC and saying, okay, we knew that their offense could play. We knew that they were going to get their chances and their opportunities, but it just seems like, Joe, every time that Fullerton gives the ball away, RCC is coming down to the other side of the pool and saying, okay, we're going to set things up and we're going to get this ball into the cage. Top of the point, it would go to the Hornets. Set up with Monse Maldonado. Maldonado pressure there. With Jackson, Jackson on the inside. She tries to find Ruan, and that one will get poked away at the last second and go to Mather. Great transition so far for RCC. They find it on the far side of the pool. If you're watching from the broadcast location, now to the right wing, taken away. The Hornets get themselves a takeaway. Go on that far side is able to take the ball away, and she is able to usher us into the end of the first quarter of play. So at the end of the first quarter of play, it's 5-1 for both of these two sides. You are watching Water Polo Wednesdays here on KBPK. Ryan Osborne, Joseph Pavlenko, joining you live here from Fullerton, California, as the Hornets currently trailing it by a little bit, and RCC has looked... Very efficient. They've looked like the team to beat in the Orange Empire Conference to this point. And very frankly, they've looked pretty dominating here in the first quarter. Joe, 
you yourself watching this one, pool side, it just goes back to what you were talking about. You were talking about both of these teams have to be efficient, and Riverside has been, well, we'll say much more efficient. <laughs> You managed to put that a lot more eloquently <laughs> than I've been able to put two words together so far today. So thank you. Um, but yeah, and it also goes to what I was trying to say before, you know, the last play in RCC was able to find the back of the net before the end of the first quarter. It's Gabriel Martinez had a pretty good, great, amazing squad. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one of those words you want to use, all of them maybe, um, last year. And because of his program and his work and their work ethic, they moved on. I overheard you and him speaking, and he has a younger squad this mm -hmm. year because of that. I mean, you look at people like Lughart last year who was fantastic for Fullerton, and she had that secondary scoring down pat for Fullerton, and she moves on to a place like, oh, I don't know, you know, small program, UCLA, one of the top-ranked programs in the entire NCAA, and if not the nation as well. And his players from last year, starters, coming off the bench as well. They had an excellent opportunity to move themselves on and they were able to go and play very meaningful minutes wherever they have ended up. CBUs, the APUs, the UCLAs, all those different types of places. He's able to move his student athletes forward and that's one thing that he commits pride into. However, you switch it over, kind of like what you were talking about. You look at this team right now, it's tough for them now because they're trying to find that scoring that they lost. They lost so many people from both their sophomore and freshman class that it kind of gives a lot more turnover and turmoil to this program as a whole. So we're getting set for quarter number two, but go ahead, Joe. I was gonna say, when you have a team like RCC, right? And they want to be aggressive. They basically want to take the ball and jam it down your throat. You need to come ready to defend that. You need to know that every turnover, their intent is to turn it into a scoring opportunity. Not just have a good pass session, not just knock on your door, but their goal is to try to find the back of the net, create some sort of scoring opportunity, and, you know, continue to expand upon that lead. RCC successful in doing that so far this match, leading the match five to one. And you have Fullerton, who needs to. I heard you call it a cage. I'm a soccer player. I'm probably going to continue saying back of the net or, you know, the goal. And that's what Fullerton needs to do is they need to find the back of the net a couple more times, if not maybe more than just a couple times over the course of the rest of this match. And the deal for Fullerton, the biggest thing, will be the fact that they need to get on the board quickly. And, yes, they do need to find the back of the cage a lot more, but... What's going to be interesting for Fullerton is that when they set up their offense, especially a person up, are they able to stretch out the RCC defense so that way they can get their wings a lot more space to work with? You're seeing Halushka on this right-hand side of the pool where they're trying to set things up. It allows for an open lane for Riley Jackson. Jackson looking for someone, gets a teammate to score, and the assist will go to Jackson. The goal is actually going to be credited to Kaylee Rojas. And Rojas has her 15th of the season. So she opens the scoring. She gets one back for Fullerton. And Fullerton trails it 5-2. Second quarter just underway. Seven and a half left to go in this frame. Ball on the far side of the pool. It will end up into the awaiting arms of a Tiger. They're trying to find someone on this near side with Ruiz, who ends up going to the point. Annabella, Annabella Storar. We'll have it near side. Storar tosses it to the far, looking for Robertson. Robertson backing up, and Halushka is there. Now on the inside, they look for someone to Ruiz. Ruiz, little half floater, goes up and over and in. Goes past Doherty, that's a goal. And Fullerton College gives up the sixth goal of the game to RCC. You hear Coach Gabriel Martinez in the background saying, hey, you know what? His squad needs to just relax, take a deep breath. They're going to encounter the scoring of RCC. They've got to be able to capitalize on their own chances. And he says in his own words, it's okay, we're going to get it back. We just have to be able to capitalize. Here's Jackson, top of the point. She was crucial for Fullerton last year in that secondary scoring frame that we were talking about. Jackson on the inside looking for someone trying to find Halushka. Halushka has it over top and it ends up going off the crossbar. Kayla Arias was there. She had the attempt, but
but it will go the way of Mather, and RCC can set up once more. You look at Fullerton last year, trying to find themselves the conference crown. They do end up getting into the postseason once again, which is no surprise under Gabriel Martinez as a save is made there on the left-hand side of your screen. Successfully there by Doherty. And Bethany Doherty in her 10th game played so far. She is able to keep Fullerton just trailing 6-2. Ordinary goes against Nelson. Nelson far side. She's looking for Kaylee Rojas. Rojas. Ends up going in on the dive, tries to get it herself, goes off the crossbar again, and Fullerton has hit the top of the frame three different times in the early going. Fullerton College certainly knocking on the door of Riverside. Riverside's not letting them in the house, though. While it, it seems to me, Ryan, they're very physical on that defensive end, not just blocking shots, not just trying to get hands in the way, but almost looking like they're getting their entire body up on the attacking players in Fullerton, on the Fullerton side. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned that, Joe, because you look at the defense of RCC, lots of high pressure. doesn't matter if the ball is at the point or the wing. They're sending someone and getting up as quickly as possible. Six on the shot clock. It goes to Jackson. Jackson has to get it into Halushka. Halushka has a chance with Arias. Arias ends up seeing that one parried away over to Weski. Weski with a chance, and it goes off to the left of Mather, and it's out. Oh, so close for the Hornets. They had two consecutive shots that were quality chances, but just aren't able to get that one in, and it remains at 6-2. On the inside, RCC another attempt. Three straight saves by Doherty. And Doherty can lead the offense going forward. The Hornets going from left to right in the blue caps. And RCC in the all white caps going from right to left. Men's water polo team walking across. They had a win over Fullerton, Riverside that is. In the earlier matchup, right before this game, five seconds on the shot clock, Halushka took a shot at it and ended up going wide. Now RCC the other way. Under four and a half to play here in quarter number two. Our score is 6-2 Riverside with the advantage. A chance just inside the point. It will go to Ruiz. Ruiz trying to find the flat, but she ends up turning that ball over and it goes to Halushka. Hornets trying to go into transition. Turn the ball over. They try to get it on that left-hand side to Weski. And Weski will see that one go awry. Fullerton squad looks like they're starting to settle in. They're starting to pick up the pace, kind of looking like they're trying to match the aggression that the Fuller, uh, the, excuse me, Ryan, that the <laughs> RCC squad, the Tigers are bringing to this match. Whistle there, an extra opportunity for RCC. There's a shot and a goal. Abigail Ruiz gets herself on the board, and RCC takes the lead at 7-2. to two. So we talked about this young team for Fullerton College. They're still trying to learn, still trying to get their opportunities to learn when they have the ability to dominate. But it's tough when you're facing a team in Riverside who... If you're the RCC Tigers, you're looking at it as last year, they were very competitive in the OEC. They played Fullerton tough. They get themselves into the state playoff. And now, if you're an RCC fan, you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is an excellent opportunity to kind of say, hey, this is our time to shine in the Orange Empire Conference. Right hand side, you see it. Picked up, taken away by Michaela Nielsen. Nielsen. Looking for a teammate, she'll find Thomas. Thomas, right wing, she'll fly it over, looking for a chance on the skip shot. It goes to Burrell, and Burrell has her third of this one. 8-2 RCC with the advantage. And Joey really all stems back to RCC having an excellent first couple of moments where on three of their first four possessions, they're able to get the ball into the net. And so far, they haven't looked back as Fullerton currently trails 8-2. Yeah, our Riverside's offense in this water polo match reminds me a lot of how the men's Fullerton College soccer team likes to play. They like to 
you know, take every turnover, turn it into, if not just a shot on goal, turn it into a scoring opportunity, and widen that gap as much as possible. We saw them do it the first game we covered this season. Second game, not so much. And you see RCC kind of employing, employing a similar strategy today with them being up. What is it, 8-1? Eight 8-2. Two. Eight two. Eight two. Both goals for Fullerton as that one ends up skying high and wide off of Arias. Both goals so far for Fullerton College have been scored by Kaylee Rojas. She's been the leader for the Hornets in this one to this point. Left-hand side, Fullerton trying to get back in time. Switch at goalkeeper, Fullerton actually takes out Doherty and brings back Brisella Robinson. Looking for an angle is Ruiz. Ruiz, now with the teammate to Burrell. Back swim is Ruiz, once more tipped away. Fullerton on the takeaway, can't successfully get it all the way away. It goes back over to Ruiz. Shot clock now freshened at 30. On the inside, it goes to Grace Dean. Dean, ordinary foul goes against the Hornets. It goes against Franco. Franco sees that one go over to the right. And just to the right of her, Samantha Thomas gets on the board. It's 9-2. I think we need to see the Hornet team put a little bit more pressure on when they're on the defense. They're letting Riverside pass around too much, get too comfortable in their half of the field, and not just take any shot. They're letting Riverside decide, you know what? Don't like the angle here. Let's set it there. Oh, they don't like it. Let's pass it, pass it, pass it. Ooh, there's the angle, and you see the laser beam go into the back of the net. And the thing for Fullerton is that what we have seen in the past and what Coach Gabriel Martinez's system is, is that he has a lot of high pressure defensively and it allows them to move into a quick transition and a solid setup offensively. However, as you're talking about, Joe, it looks as if Fullerton just having a little trouble keeping up here with RCC to this point. Another opportunity is there and scored by Riverside City College to make it 10-2. Left-hand side getting the goal there will end up being Michaela Nielsen. She has her first of this one. And now the Hornets will end up going on the reset. Trying to set things up on the right-hand side. They end up turning the ball over on their last time up the pool. 20 on the shot clock. Riley Jackson swimming back just for a second. Little floater tries to place it well there for Franco. Excuse me, Arias, and Arias will have it go off the tip of her fingers and get turned over towards the other side. So the RCC Tigers now with it. Riverside on the back pedal with Nielsen. Nielsen with Dean. Dean looking to the five meter area, tries to find Thomas. Thomas with a shot, a save is made by Brisella Robinson. Robinson gets another, another save to her credit. Foul on Fullerton gives it right back to the Tigers. And with exactly one minute left here in the second, RCC trying to get another one here. They've got a two-on-one if they hurry, a chance, and a goal. So Thomas is two for three on her last three attempts. She gets that one into the frame, and it will end up making it 11-2 Riverside City College with the lead over top of the Fullerton College Hornets. Now remember, both these two teams played each other to start off the season 13 to five. That was the win for RCC. And well, for the moment being, it looks like RCC is on their way to that score. Quick setup here for the Hornets. Trying to battle the glares. Arias is inside of six meters, sends a shot up and high. Now you can't fault her for taking that shot, but it's unlucky that it just kind of went up and over. Yeah, she set up pretty well for that, got the inside body position right at the six, and then was able to turn around and take the shot. She frees up her hand and just sees that one sail up over top of her. Foul against Fullerton. Ball on the left side. They look for a back shot, and Thomas with the turnaround is able to get that one to go. A beautifully placed shot there by Thomas with 13.4 left in the second quarter, and RCC is up by 10. It's 12-2. That was a cheeky little scoop, and I'm going to send it behind me. Yeah, and it 
credit the vision there for Thomas as she gets her third of this matchup and she is able to watch as this ball ends up being shot over towards the left. It will go wide. That takes us to the half and Fullerton College trails it 12-2. RCC has been efficient. They have scored quite a bit and plain and simple, the RCC Tigers have a big time lead here at the half. You are watching Water Polo Wednesdays here on KBPK. Ryan Osborne joined by Joseph Pavlenko to my right. Joe here at the half. Well, plain and simple, you and I have been talking about this matchup where Fullerton has just not had the chances that they would like. The pressure isn't quite there, but you switch it over to what RCC is doing well. And so far right now, RCC and the Tigers, well, to say that they have brought pressure defensively has been an understatement. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. They've done more than uh, brought pressure. They've brought the fire hose and just turned it on the back of Fullerton's net. Um, again, we talked about Gabriel Martinez. He had some amazing scores, went on to other things. And so you see this younger team going up against a team that you mentioned earlier, Ryan, was pretty darn close to coming out on top at state last year. Mm -hmm. And so RCC, like you were saying, the fans, this is where you kind of put your flag in the sand this season maybe and go, yep, this is how good we are. Nice try this year, Fullerton. We'll see you next year maybe. You look at Fullerton College to this point, as we were talking about earlier, eight and six so far this season. They played Riverside once in the early going. This one is in conference, however. If you're the Fullerton Hornets, what you're basically looking at is you're saying, okay, yeah, this one's a tough one, and so far they haven't been able to really match what RCC has done offensively. But on the other hand, if you're Fullerton, you're also getting a lot of pluses. You're getting a lot of pluses from the save attempts by Bethany Doherty in the early going when she brought, was brought in halfway through the first. She got a couple of attempts on her and was able to make the save, and impressively so. She actually made, at, at one point, there were five straight shots for RCC that she was able to parry away. So credit to her, you're still seeing those pluses, those advantages, those learning lessons for Fullerton, but for the moment being at the half. It's Riverside 12, Fullerton 2. So since we are, at the, we are at the half, Joe, very quickly, we do want to give not necessarily a promotion, but more just awareness for everyone who is watching at home of something that Fullerton College is making everyone aware of, making everyone privy to, is something that means a lot to not just the station, but not just this campus, but everyone in the United States. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this week starts things off in the city of Fullerton and in Fullerton College. And Joe, it's you, you talked about it at the start of this program, but here at Fullerton College, it's something that is incredibly meaningful to a lot of people who have this program in place. Yeah, it's certainly, I mean, myself personally, you know, the, the saying is if, if it doesn't happen to you, it's going to happen to somebody close to you or somebody in your family, right? Um, me, it's a couple family members, now my, my wife, people in her family, there's been people across Fullerton College that we've known. Some of our broadcast partners have even came out and fought the big C and come out on top. And so it's something to be mindful of. My wife, breast cancer survivor twice. Um, and that's what October is, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But, you know, while we're talking about it, let's just talk about it in broad brush strokes. Yes, we want to bring awareness to this. I think also when a lot of people talk about breast cancer, they think of people, you know, older, kind of further along in their walk in life. And it's a little more unusual to see some, some younger women come up with it. People, you know, in their 20s, 30s, even maybe early 40s. But it's happening more and more and kind of not kind of it is unfortunate and so it's bringing awareness it's telling people hey get your checkup you know check the lumps do that test self-test go get your mammograms what you need to do to stay healthy and that's kind of the bottom line message this month is is be aware do what you need to take care of yourself you know self-care 
and all of that. And one thing that's interesting, too, I mean, you see the graphic on the screen right there, how it affects most people in the United States. Over 300,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer diagnosed each year. Nearly 13% of all women in the United States will be at risk of developing it at one point in their life. That That's one in eight. That means you're looking around and you're saying, okay, of the eight people that I know, at least one of them, at least one of them, is at risk for developing breast cancer and there are over four million survivors in the country today and that's not just something that's a small number that's not something that affects just a few people one in eight or a minimum of one in eight two in eight sometimes that means that it's most likely someone you know it's most likely someone in your family or your family friend that has had to deal with this and has had to brave through this it's not something that you say, oh, it's a statistic. It's something that hits home for a lot of people. Yeah, and I mean, again, Ryan, and I, Ryan not trying to oversell it, but I mean, I've heard other people talk. I've heard my wife speak. I've heard friends of hers speak on and about it, and they talk about it as, you know, the hardest fight that they had in their life. And so bottom line is as we get the second half of this game kicking off i'll toss it back to you you know take care of yourself be aware get checked out keep yourself healthy look out for yourself and i think that's it yeah and it's it's imperative for everyone as this one gets back underway it's imperative for everyone to realize that you have if you have the opportunity to go get yourself checked Make sure that you do. Give yourself that opportunity, even if it is inconvenient at times. You know the schedule gets busy and everyone has things that they have to do, but it's very important for your health and also to look at your loved ones and say, hey, if you have the opportunity, please go and get yourself checked just to make sure that everything is okay. So Breast Cancer Awareness Week starting things off here in Full or at Fullerton College, starting off Breast Cancer Awareness Month in Fullerton College as this one ends up flying in, but just want to make sure that everyone's aware that this campaign is going on here at Fullerton College, and it's also something that's near and dear to the heart of the athletics program here at Fullerton. You look at someone like Marsha Foster, who has established a couple of programs, not just at Fullerton, but in, during her coaching career. Just go back to the Altel 2 program that goes to student athletes and lets them know, hey, you know, just tell two people that you know that they need to make sure that they have the opportunity to go get themselves checked, go get a mammogram, make sure that they're okay as that ball ends up getting turned over and RCC will take it over. But it's truly important, not just to Fullerton College as a whole, but also the athletic program, just the people that we interact with Joe each and every day. Back here at the pool, RCC 13 to two. They have the advantage, but Fullerton College with the ball. Riley Jackson looking for a teammate on the inside, trying to find someone right at the six marker. And it ends up as a Fullerton ball to Arias. Arias with a shot and a save there by Mather. Mather has been good in this one. She has so far been presented with six shots on goal and has made saves on each and every one. Our score currently at 13 to two. Ball right at mid pool. It will go now to Nelson. Nelson gets a goal. Nice and easy there for Nelson. She's able to get back on the board. And we were talking about her earlier. So far this season, Jesse Nelson making a case to be a state player of the year to say the least. Recorded 46 goals and six assists to her credit so far. That was coming into this matchup. Also added 19 steals as well. Started off her season with a bang. Six goals against Fullerton. And had 19 goals in her first four games combined. But recently she had been going through what eh, we'll call a in parentheses drought. As she only had four goals in her last four matches prior to their last matchup. Broke out of that with a scoring outburst against Long Beach. Ball the other way into transition. Goes to Chandler Burrell. Burrell on goal, and she ends up seeing that one skipped away. Nice save presented by Brisella Robinson. Robinson so far this season, 10 games played. She has now been in a total of 17 and a half quarters. 
And a save percentage just a shade over 50%. 14 to two, it continues. Loaded ball near side of the pool. Heavy pressure presented by the Hornets and Kaylee Rojas. Rojas watches this one get flipped over and now into the arms of Robinson who comes out and is able to be aggressive on her line and take the ball away. Riverside City 14, Fullerton 2. That's our score with just under five minutes to go here in the third. Backed up, it goes to the right arm of Kaylee, Kayla Arias. Arias now looking for Halushka. Halushka just goes wide. Oh, so close there for Halushka. She had a good look, but ends up going wide of the cage. RCC once again looking to push, trying to take advantage of Fullerton College, taking extra chances as Robinson makes a save. Beautiful job there by Robinson, and she is able to get up to the ball, make herself big, present herself big in the frame, and she makes the save. So it stays at 14-2. And Fullerton will take over with 12 on the shot clock. Now at 10, inside Halushka, tipped away from Arias, and it will find the awaiting arm of Thomas. Thomas says, hey, if we can get up the pool as quickly as possible, we will do so. And she sends it up to Abigail Ruiz. Ruiz. Backs up for a second. Little spin there by Jaden Johnson. Jaden backing up for a moment. Looking for someone on the inside. Here's Thomas. Sends that one right into the awaiting arms of Robinson. We were talking about it at the half. This is a plus for Fullerton. They are able to kind of take from this that their goalkeeping has been pretty good in the presented chances that they have had. Fullerton now with 15 on the shot clock. Gets it taken away. And RCC will continue forward. Frustrating afternoon to this point for the Hornets. Left-hand side, shot and a goal. RCC 15, Fullerton 2. As it looks like RCC is going to go through some wholesale changes. We'll get those for you in just a moment. You know, it was really my hope that as this game went on, Ryan, that glare would move <laughs> away, off, and be going gone out of the pool. It's gotten bigger. Yeah, it said absolutely not to you. So this goes to the right. Coming in for the first time is Naomi Morales. She'll be joined by Kennedy Guidizzi. You know, as much as we're talking about it and how much it looks, it sucks for us, the cameramen covering the broadcast, we have the luxury of sunglasses in the broadcast booth and our cameramen have as well. These players don't, though. Yeah, as Franco ends up getting this one off the top of the cage, you, you're absolutely right there, Joe, because especially if you're Fullerton in this quarter or RCC in the last two, you know, you're looking up trying to find your teammate and you're essentially looking up at the sun. And then you go to the other side of the pool and it's pure shade. Lots of difficulties to have to deal with if you're a student athlete as this one is sent over to the awaiting arm of Jaden Johnson. Johnson takes a far shot looking for the prayer on that right hand corner but it is saved by Robinson once more. So Robinson will take over with Jackson. High pressure there by Morales. Morales joined out there by Michaela Nielsen in addition to Guidizzi. New player in for RCC on the left hand side will be Grace Dean. No exclusion there. That's an ordinary. Gives Fullerton the ball inside. They try and find someone on the six and they Try and go to Monse Maldonado, who takes the shot. That gets saved. Goes wide. 
RCC takes over once again. It's 15-2. You see the water polo team, the men's side for Riverside City College. Earlier getting a win over Fullerton, women's side trying to make it a sweep of the afternoon. Robinson. Now for Arias. Arias tried to go for the spinner, floats it over top of herself, and sends it wide. So Fullerton, last three shots have not been on frame. Grace Dean. Dean sees a shot that ends up getting saved once again by Robinson. Kennedy Guidizzi, one who took the shot there. Lots of open space to work with here for the Hornets. They've got a two on one and they've got a goal. That goal will be credited to Monse Maldonado. And for Maldonado, that'll be her 23rd of the season. 23 goals, nine assists to her credit. She gets on the board. And now Fullerton with the lead, or excuse me, RCC with the lead at 15 to three. Riverside on the setup. High pressure there presented by Fullerton and Bruan. Bruan forces a turnover alongside Halushka. Halushka, one of the leaders for this Fullerton squad. Now see it go over to Jackson. Jackson wants to find Arias. Arias, ordinary right at the six marker. A little backpedal there. Poked away from Franco. And it will end up staying with the Tigers after they dispossess the Hornets. Baroque, near side, little tug there. Now Guidizzi, back door. It's there for Naomi Morales. So Morales just checks in and she gets on the board. So Riverside City College gets themselves a 16 to three advantage. 9.1 seconds left in this third quarter of play. Fullerton College trailing it to Riverside, 16-3. Time ticking down, five seconds on the clock. And a shot will be taken that ends up just going wide. Oh, so close there for Brisella Robinson. And that will take us to the end of the third. As we go to the fourth quarter of play between Fullerton and RCC, it is Fullerton trailing at 16-3. You are watching Water Polo Wednesdays here on KBPK. As we get set to take over the fourth quarter here in the city of Fullerton, Ryan Osborne, Joseph Pavlenko, and Joe, coming up this Friday, Fullerton College and KBPK have something really cool going on because it's not just about Fullerton College. It's not just about KBPK. It's about college radio stations everywhere. Yes, sir. Uh, this Friday is World College Radio Day. The theme this year, where all voices are welcome, Ryan. That's right. That's why we're trying to get as many people involved, as many different points of view involved. That's why when Gil at Fullerton College from the president's office mentioned to us about him wanting to, you know, do something on campus to really bring extra attention to breast cancer awareness, this month, we said, you know what? Why don't you come on by if you have the time? Not sure that's going to work out. We'll get him on talking about it some other time, though, and we'll find somebody else to come on and talk about their experiences, hopefully, as time ticks on and moves us closer to World College Radio Day. Also Friday, Manufacturing Day. So why don't we bring the Dean of the Technology and Engineering Department in 
and have him talk to some of the radio students, get on the air and talk about the technology and engineering division here at Fullerton College, something that KBPK is part of as well. While we're at it, why don't we talk to Jay Seidel? We invited him by, and he'll be talking to us about his time as a journalism instructor here, his time at the helm of the Hornet, which is celebrating its 100 year anniversary here, here at Fullerton College. And as he's now piloting an entirely new ship, an entirely new vehicle, Ryan, drones. He's in charge of the Fullerton College Drone Lab. So we're gonna get him on as well, hopefully talking to some students on Friday as well as anybody else who's around. So Cora, you come on by, you're getting interviewed. Manny, you're teaching the class, you're getting interviewed. Mark, I know you're around all the time. So we're gonna have you on, you're gonna get interviewed. And then as that wraps up, we're gonna go march our happy selves over to Sherbeck, Hal Sherbeck Field. I'm sorry, I tried to truncate that name, Ryan. Hal Sherbeck Field. <laughs> for Football Fridays with KBPK, Ryan Osborne, Mark Pavlovich, Corey Nayland, myself, and the students of the 145 sports broadcasting class will be bringing you the football match, home match of Fullerton College this week at 6 p.m. And they'll be playing Saddleback, which is gonna be an interesting matchup because Saddleback is number two in the Orange Empire Conference. Fullerton is number one. Both of those two teams have had some excellent battles in recent memory. And to see both of them go face to face against one another on Football Fridays will be electric. So that's what we got coming up here on a Friday, not only in the morning, not only in the afternoon, but also at nighttime here on KBPK. And we thank all of you who are joining us online on KBPK. So we get set for the fourth quarter of play. Bring back the scoreboard. It's 16 to three in favor of RCC. As Fullerton and RCC swim to the middle, try and joust for that ball. And it ends up into the awaiting arms of the Hornets. Halushka, she'll have the ball trying to end up backing up Robinson. Halushka changes sides. Near side of the pool, she'll find someone. That ends up being a lot of contact that goes to Monse Maldonado. Maldonado looking for Arias. Arias tag team there by three different defenders, and they were able to take the ball away successfully, and RCC takes over. RCC doesn't realize that they have the ball directly behind them. Specifically, that was Chandler Burrell, but Burrell gets a lot of contact to made against her by Rojas and RCC will take over and score. Right side of your screen is Brisella Robinson. She has been the goalkeeper for Fullerton in each of the last two quarters. She started off the game and then Fullerton Kind of found themselves into some trouble in the early going. She got switched out for Bethany Doherty. And then Coach Gabriel Martinez brings back Robinson. And Robinson has been in since about five minutes left in the second frame. Minute into this fourth quarter of play. Fullerton trailing 17-3. Lots of glare on that far side, but it will not matter as that's a goal for the Fullerton College Hornets. And I believe that goes to Halushka on the far side of the pool. Actually, we're going to switch it up. Excuse me, it wasn't Halushka. That'll go to Elise Weski. Weski with a beautiful shot there, well placed, and she gets Fullerton back on the board, 17 to four. One, two, three, go the RCC Tigers. A chance and a goal on the right side. They get that one placed in there. That's going to be a goal credited to Annabella Storar. It really feels like this entire match, whenever Fullerton's able to find the rhythm, find the momentum, turn things their way and get a goal, RCC comes back almost immediately and sings their rendition of anything you can do, I can do better. Yeah, it's been difficult for the Hornets because of all of that high pressure that's been presented by RCC. 
20 seconds left on the shot clock. And you mentioned that it looks like every time that RCC gets scored on, they have been quite content to just say, we're going to get up the pool as quickly as possible, get set as fast as possible, and just move the ball up in transition. And it's been a problem for Fullerton in terms of swimming and catching up to RCC because you're seeing two different people down low for Fullerton try and cover that six meter mark or we'll say more inside of two meters. Riley Jackson and then it seems like Arias on the last opportunity. As Halushka goes chasing after it, she's going to drop back and try and double team. Jackson is going to move up to the point. Little floater hits the top of the goal and gets poked back in. Alushka couldn't find Thomas, and Thomas ends up scoring to make it 19-4. You know what? A couple of weeks ago, we were doing a soccer game, and I quoted uh, Theodore Lasso saying, you got to be goldfish. Forget it happened and moved on. RCC makes me think of another coach, one Gordon Bombay. you got to pick up the trash. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. It's You look at this one, it's the... It's the type of game for Fullerton that's easier to forget as this will be poked over on the left-hand side trying to catch up to it. Not quite in time for Franco. Franco re-gets to it and that one sits on the goal line and will be popped out. RCC is there once more with five and a half to play. But it's an easier game for a student athlete to be able to erase from the memory due to the fact that you say, okay, things just didn't go our way, plain and simple. You are able to erase that from your mind because you say, hey, nothing went the way that we would have liked, so let's just move on and move forward. When you're looking at it from RCC's perspective, you're thinking to yourself, okay, our defense was fantastic. When we played with a person up, we were two for two, and then we just kind of asserted ourselves at the start of the first and start of the fourth, and it allows for them to not necessarily coast, but get a lot more comfortable in their game plan, get a lot more comfortable going into transition because you're not worrying about whether or not you're going to get caught back on the counter. Shot there, saved by Mather. She now has eight saves to her credit. And with under four and a half to play, the score is 19 to four. I will say this, Ryan. Over here at the broadcast table, or on your monitor watching this game, you might think, hey, that glare kind of sucks. Anytime I look up to the actual pool to see the action going on in not one of our preview monitors, I'm blinded. <laughs> it is quite difficult to try and, we'll say, maneuver through all of the glare that takes place here at Fullerton, but it's not really anyone's fault. It's just the way that the sun sets at this time of year. It ends up setting over top of... Oh, what would we call that? The art building just beyond the Fullerton College Aquatic Center. And just kind of stays right in the viewing lane of the athletes. Little pop shot that goes in off the hands of Mather and Fullerton has scored once more. So 22-5 is our score as the Fullerton College Hornets get one back. Excellent shot that was taken there by Franco. And Franco gets the Hornets back on the board just over an hour into this one and under four minutes to play. Fullerton, Fullerton College finding some kind of something. Let's hope they can stop this attack, turn it around, get a couple more points on the board. Inside. In the yellow is Morales. Morales sees that go over to Jackson. Jackson turns around and she will take over. So Fullerton looking ahead to the Orange Empire Conference, going to have to get themselves back on track and in a hurry. They go into transition here, an excellent lane presenting itself for the Hornets, a chance that is given over to Weske and she takes over and she will score. Beautifully done there by Elise as she takes it from her yellow essentially all the way across the pool, is able to drive the lane towards the frame and gets that one in on the right-hand side. So a goal for the Hornets, they get back 
Another one. It's now 22-6. It'll pop over to the right. Goes now to Morales. Morales is going to have to reset here with three on the clock exactly. Turnover by RCC. Fullerton says, all right, you know what? Let's push the ball up if we can. Get back on the board. Riley Jackson looking for it. Wasn't expecting that transition pass to land to her right shoulder. Thought it was going to land in front of her so she could catch it in pace. And with under three to play, RCC retakes it. Exclusion against the Hornets. There's a shot popped over top, and that's going to go away. Nice save presented there by Robinson. Brisella is able to get herself back into it. She gets a save. Coach Gabriel Martinez, excellent job of tossing that extra ball in. It's kudos from the official, and now RCC will take it back over with Marissa Baroque. Baroque, left-handed. Turning around. Now on the left-hand side of the offense, it will end up going to Georgia Roach. Roach to the point. She'll find Liss. Nicole Liss. Liss on the shot, deflected up and wide. Beautifully done there by Franco as she's able to get a hand on it and deflect it up over top. Coming up on two minutes to play in this one, it is 20-6 RCC with the advantage. Riley Jackson with the ball. She's going to have to turn quickly, but her shooting lane is taken away. Now she'll go to the point with it with Monse Maldonado. Maldonado to Rojas. Rojas scores. Closing minutes of this game, Ryan. Fullerton College Hornets finally coming alive. Looks like the engine finally turned over. It's just getting themselves into a rhythm, realizing that they've got to establish their own style of offense. I mean, we talked to Coach Gabriel Martinez quite a bit about his style of offense, and he says, hey, let's get it up the pool. Let's surprise the other team. If we have the opportunity, let's get it up there, catch them off guard, and wait, or excuse me, go on the attack before we can wait for them to get back. And you're seeing Fullerton have success here ever since they have been able to get themselves back into that. There's a save that is presented once again by Robinson. Minute and a half on the clock. Fullerton trailing it 20 to seven, but have scored four out of the last five goals. Hornets. Here's Arias on the right hand, just gets a piece of that for, Ma for Mather. Hornets seem intent on making a statement in the closing minutes of this. And that's something that you have to be able to hang your hat upon. If you're Fullerton College, this ball floated over to the right. Ruan is going to heavy pressure that one on the right. Excuse me, that is Rojas. Rojas along with Morales. Rojas tries to tip it away. Now floated up over top. It goes to Baroque. Baroque will end up turning it over. And you're right, Ryan. After the first half, after the third quarter, would have been real easy for Fullerton College to just lay down and go, you know what, this one's a wash. It sucks. We'll learn from this. We'll move on. We'll get better. We'll improve. But they didn't do that. They continued to fight, fourth quarter, found the fire, mm -hmm. and put the ball in the back of the net. Something that, like you were talking about, something that Fullerton has to take a look at and say, hey, we got ourselves some opportunities. We had the ability to be able to set up our offense when we finally got a chance to get in rhythm as Fullerton will end up seeing this go over to Morales. Morales is going to poke it back over to Ashlyn Dodson. Dodson with two on the clock. Little floater to her right. That's going to end this one. So a final score of 20-7 to seven, RCC with the win the advantage and the Riverside City College Tigers will take it. If you are an avid watcher and listener of KBPK, we invite you to join us on Friday as World College Radio Day gets underway in the morning. Lots of interviews with different people all across campus who are important to KBPK and Fullerton College. Don't forget that is this upcoming Friday. 
Also on Friday night will be Football Fridays as Fullerton takes on Saddleback College. That's on Friday. This is it for Water Polo Wednesday. For Joseph Pavlenko, I'm Ryan Osborne. A decisive victory that goes the way of the Riverside City College Tigers as they beat Fullerton by a score of 20-7. to You have been watching Water Polo Wednesdays here on KBPK.